This was never going to be just a quiet family funeral. Nearly 500 friends, neighbors, and the simply curious turned out to say goodbye to Violet Cray. Some of her family have been described as the most evil villains London has ever known. To 72-year-old Vi, they were and remained sons who needed love and affection. She called the Cray twins, Ronnie and Reggie, now serving life for vicious gangland murders, my lovely boys, and faithfully visited them all over the country. In the shadow of the council flats that have been the family home for 15 years, their floral tributes, roses on chrysanthemums, rested among 300 other wreaths, including one display of red and yellow carnations and lilies, signed simply from the boys in Parkhurst. There were more flowers from film stars, underworld figures, and an ex-great train robber or two. One of Vi's ex-neighbours, Ellen Clement, remembered her with respect. I know her as a neighbour, an ex-neighbour, yeah. and I used to meet her uh, almost every Sunday getting her paper, and to me she was a very fine woman. Yeah. And she had more energy, and I was so surprised it happened. Me she too. had more energy in her than lots of these youngsters. She used to really, you know, walk quickly, run along the street. Yeah. She was, so a And she them. always asked her after my son and my grandchildren, and she didn't even know him. She was a fantastic yeah. woman. Half an hour late, the cortege wound its way through the East End the Crays knew so well 13 years ago to the little Chingford Old Church, now swamped by this unaccustomed congregation and publicity. Hidden inside, Ronnie and Reggie waited, released for a day but handcuffed to their minders, their first real taste of the outside world for 13 years. After a 30-minute service, Ronnie and Reggie were allowed to hug their relatives and close friends for a matter of seconds. Then they filed out of the church, leaving the twins under tight security. Ten tense minutes later, as the security cordon tightened around the little Chingford church, out of a back door came a diminutive Reggie Cray, dwarfed by his guards on either side. And a few seconds later, his bespectacled twin brother, Ronnie. The short walk down the side of the church was their final breath of fresh air. They weren't allowed to go to the graveside, but were whisked back to their separate prisons, Ronnie to Broadmoor, Reggie to Parkhurst. Meanwhile, an even bigger crowd rushed to the graveside service for Vi, next to where Reggie's wife, Frances, is buried. Among the famous faces was Diana Dawes. Close family rubbed shoulders with the merely nosy, and the surrounding graves were trampled underfoot. For elder brother Charlie Cray, it had been an emotional time. All I'd like to say as well that, you know, for the people uh, to do kindness, I can't believe. I mean, I just can't believe it. It amazed me the amount of reeves and the way people behaved. In fact, everybody. Don't you find it strange that in spite of your family's reputation, you get all this support? Well, I, I've got an answer for that, really, is to um, whatever they did, um, you know one I condone, but at the same time, one thing I keep try, uh, insisting about is they've never harmed the public, you see, and they let people out who do harm the public and kill children and women, they still release them, but the twins, they never do. I mean, they've never harmed the public. Whatever they did was wrong, they know it, but uh, if they let them out tomorrow, the public's not got to run away. Then it was over. The black limousines took the family away from the crowds, back to their local pub in the city. And at last, Violet Cray could rest in peace. Michael Wilson, Thames News.